So recently a fellow YouTuber and also a good friend of mine, Rocket Jump Ninja, who reviews mice, was looking for a comparison between the GTX 1080 Ti and also the RTX 2080 Ti. And he's looking around, he found some generic videos, but he said to me, Brian, can you just make a comparison between these two graphics cards and give it to me straight? And that's exactly what we're gonna do here today, guys. I'm gonna be taking both these graphics cards, overclocking them, and then telling you what the DLO is. And also speaking of the 1080 Ti, I also got asked in the comments about the RTX 2060 versus the GTX 1080 Ti. And some people have seen these going for a similar price used as one of these brand new. And I'm gonna stop straight here before we even start the benchmarks and say, if you can find one of these for 350 US and it's in good working condition or in Australia 500 Aussie dollars, which is what a RTX 2060 goes for, then that's an absolute no brainer. This card right here is in another league compared to the RTX 2060. But with that said, let's get this comparison underway. That's Italian for comparison. So with those results, we can see a few different things. And I did decide to throw in a few extra graphics cards for you guys, but I did highlight the 1080 Ti and the 2080 Ti. Now, within this own comparison, we've kind of got two comparisons going on. And that's because Zai loaned me his GTX 1080 Ti Strix OC. And what we saw out of the box, this card is aggressively overclocked. And so when we went to manually overclock it, we didn't get a whole lot of extra performance out of it, as opposed to the Galax 2080 Ti, which when we overclocked that, it went a lot higher, since it's not overclocked out of the factory. Now, before we look at the numbers and the percentages, basically, if you guys aren't into overclocking, then cards like the Strix OC that have that OC in the title are going to be very good if you don't want to overclock, because they're gonna give you extra performance out of the box as compared to a standard 1080 Ti, for example. But in terms of a raw and pure comparison, in this case, I think the overclocked numbers are actually more accurate in comparing a 1080 Ti to a 2080 Ti overall. And stepping into the first benchmark here, Anthem, I decided to put the RTX 2060 in red, because as you can see, it's more of the mid-range graphics card league, as opposed to the 1080 Ti and 2080 Ti, which are going into the high end. And in the case of the 2080 Ti, it's pretty much the best card you can get in terms of performance, although its price is significantly high, and we'll get onto that later, but Anthem straight up, 4K settings here. We saw out of the box, the 2080 Ti was getting around 14% extra performance in this game, but when we overclocked it, it was getting around 23% extra frames. So again, with that Strix OC, definitely giving some extra performance out of the box, but then losing it once we overclocked that 2080 Ti from Galax. Now, the next game we got up here is Apex Legends. This game is unfortunately capped at 144 frames, and even on pretty much 1440p max settings, we got a 23% boost and then a 28% boost once we overclocked it. And funny enough to quickly interlude between these two behemoths, the Radeon 7 did very well in Apex Legends. So if you wanted to play uh, Apex Legends, that's all you're interested in, in getting the best frame rates for it, especially with new graphics cards, then the Radeon 7 may be the card that you wish to consider. But moving on to Outward, uh, this saw a 14% boost at 1440p max settings out of the box. And then once we overclocked it, we we're getting around 26% extra frames on the 2080 Ti. Moving over to Dirt Rally 2.0, 34% boost, and then OC versus OC, it was a 43% difference. So this was a huge difference. It was the biggest in the games we tested here. So Dirt Rally 2.0 being a latest release title definitely shows what the 2080 Ti can do when the games are optimized for that architecture since we are using two different architectures here between the 1080 Ti and the 2080 Ti. We've got Pascal on the 1080 Ti and we've got Turing on the 2080 Ti. Now the next game is another new release title, Generation Zero, 14% boost out of the box versus out of the box and then 20% boost once we overclock this at 1440p 
max settings. And then the last benchmark we're gonna pull up here is Time Spy Extreme for you guys. 40% difference, and then once overclocked, a 50% difference. So I guess this showcases the max potential between these two cards, but on the flip side, when we look at most of these games, we're scoring around a 15 to 30% difference, depending on the title. And I guess that's the main focus of these two Gravis cards with the 1080 Ti versus the 2080 Ti, is which game are you going to play? If you're only gonna play one game in particular, then definitely check out that performance before you go buy one of these Gravis cards and see if that extra money you're gonna spend on a 2080 Ti is going to be worth it versus the 1080 Ti. But in terms of getting the absolute best performance and is that worth it, that all depends on how much money you want to invest in PC gaming. Some people out there earn ridiculous amounts of money. So for them, if PC gaming's their passion and their hobby, they don't mind spending that premium on the 2080 Ti. But I guess for most of us, me included, that difference is obviously not gonna be worth it in a lot of cases. Now, some other quick differences between both these cards one has GDDR5X, that's the 1080 Ti, versus the 2080 Ti, which has GDDR6. It's a little bit more power efficient, a little bit more faster, but in terms of the actual memory on board, they both have 11 gigabytes. And then the uh, 2080 Ti has 12 nanometer plus from NVIDIA versus 16 nanometer on the 1080 Ti, which does make it a little bit more power efficient, but since it's a bigger piece of silicon and it does push out more performance, it actually ends up using more power overall both out of the box and overclocked. And keep in mind, this is the Galax edition, which is very power efficient. And then of course, the last thing to go over is ray tracing support and DLSS on the new RTX cards. But a lot of gamers, myself included, really aren't looking at that at the moment. It's not really wowing anyone over. And I certainly wouldn't give it hardly any weight at all when it came to making a purchasing decision between these two Gravis cards. Anyway guys, to quickly sum things up before I get on out of here, the GTX 1080 Ti is still a very capable card. If you were looking to upgrade from this card to a 2080 Ti, I'd seriously have to question you and ask you, do you really want to upgrade for that performance? It is a big premium, especially if you sell one of these on a used market and then go out and pay 1200 USD, or in Australia, I think the cheapest you can get them for is around 1700 AUD for one of these cards. I mean, the 1080 Ti still performs phenomenally well in a lot of titles. It's still a high-end card, and it's still gonna kick a lot of butt, especially when you overclock it too. It's an absolutely amazing graphics card, and you're probably wondering why I'm holding the MSI Duke. Uh, that's because someone traded it in, so it's the only 1080 Ti I've got here at the moment. But of course, that 2080 Ti does have that king status. It is the best card out there for gaming at the moment, but hopefully that answers all your questions, and if you can find a GTX 1080 Ti for the same price as the 2060, then why are you even watching this video still? Just click pause, go get the 1080 Ti, then come back and watch the last 20 seconds of this outro. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Let us know in the comments section below what you think of the GTX 1080 Ti versus the big bad RTX King 2080 Ti. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And if you wanna get some merch, link is in the description below. And if you wanna get the inside scoop, check us out on Instagram, Tech Yes City. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very that was an email coming in. There's another email coming in. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.